Barcelona. We really view is the most significant change in our product family since Opteron's introduction in 2003. One of the things that we've modeled is we see that Barcelona is going to be able to deliver performance levels for many workloads in excess of 40% beyond what Clovertown can. When we did dual core, it was really taking our existing single core product and taking those those two of those die, if you will, and integrating it on, onto a single monolithic die, but it was the same core, right? And with quad core, we're not just taking two of our dual core products that are out in the market today and bringing them and integrating them onto a single piece of silicon and saying, now we got a monolithic quad core, mm -hmm. but rather we've, we've really re architected each and of that's the what really makes it. Um, a game-changing product, a breakthrough product, is the fact that it's not simply a matter of being quad-core, and it's not simply a matter of being monolithic as opposed to our competitors being uh, multi-chip module. The real difference here is in the fact that it also includes a transition in the process technology as well as a significant microarchitectural enhancement. Everybody understands. If you went out and, and did a, a survey, everybody would kind of get it that, well, Intel does this multi-chip module thing and AMD is going to do this monolithic and integrate it together. What people don't understand is, for example, that our FPU is going to be increased from 64 bits per core to 128 bits. So instead of having a dual core product with two 64-bit FPUs, now all of a sudden you get four 128-bit FPU. So dramatic, dramatic performance improvement that will be uh, accomplished. What we're through finding that. is that more and more of even the commercial workloads outside of the HPC community are are utilizing uh, floating point code more often, and so they're benefiting more than uh, has historically been. These additional floating point capabilities will really uh, provide a significant benefit to a large portion of our users. Likewise, the cache structure, and again, this gets into the bits and bytes. One way to think about it, though, real simply, with our current dual-core product, each core has its own dedicated L1 cache for both instruction and data, and then a, a dedicated L2. Uh, with our quad-core product, not only is every core going to have its own L1 and L2, but they'll all be able to share a large L3. And that's just an architecture that uh, hasn't existed before now with the Optra. For the dedicated caches, the L1 and the L2, those those are caches that only only benefit workloads that are running on a particular core. If you if you imagine for a minute that you've got multiple processes running on this product, and one core in particular is running on a uh, an image that's very large, it can take basically take advantage of that entire L3 cache. Just that one core can and get a significant performance boost. Whereas perhaps the other three cores are fine just running out of the L1 and L2 cache. So that's where you get the benefit of each core has um, unfettered, if you will, access to the L1 and the L2. It's dedicated for its use. Having a shared L3 allows for that scenario where there's maybe one core that's really the one that's running a large process that needs all of that cash, and it gets all of the benefit. And of course, you can imagine other scenarios too where maybe there's two cores of the four that are doing that, and they get each get half of that L3 cash. And of course, that goes into the uh, some of the microarchitectural decisions we've made and how that gets architected. We went in and, and re-engineered the uh, core architecture, right? So we started looking at how we could. Uh, really improve the what we refer to as instructions per clock, right? How efficient that architecture is. Mm -hmm. And Barcelona represents the most substantial enhancements we've made to the core since the Opteron introduction in 2000. Picture, you can actually see the four cores yeah. right on there. It's pretty straightforward. And so if you go in and look at the design that's behind each of those cores, we have a um, a many thousands of line program that actually models the performance of those cores. And there's, you know, there's literally you know, hundreds of thousands of decisions we make regarding how we're going to approach that microarchitecture. And so with Barcelona, what we started looking at is uh, how might we uh, change, for example, a prefetch uh, algorithm, right, or branch prediction algorithm within that core. I mean, it's just one example of, of a decision that you have to make. And the way that you design that branch prediction will influence how often you're right to predict the branch properly. Well, if you predict the branch properly, you don't have to flush the pipeline and then reload it, but rather can continue the execution of the instruction stream uninterrupted. And that plays out by improving your IPC, your instructions per clock. So there, there are literally hundreds of small tweaks, if you will, like that, that all taken together 
represent a substantial uh, redesign of the core. Now we didn't go all the way back and I don't think it would be a, a well advised to go back and say well we're going to completely re-architect the whole pipeline. Right? It wasn't that sort of thing and we don't think that was really even merited or appropriate. But uh, short of that, we looked at everything in terms of, because we learned an awful lot about this core, right, as we've analyzed it uh, being a product since 2003. And so we had a pretty good idea of some things we could make to significantly improve it. And, and this was the, uh, Barcelona was a great opportunity to do that. Um, not just because of quad core again, but because of the transition to 65 benefits. All the benefits that you see on this page actually are relevant for dual core as much as they are for quad core. And so we're committed to delivering not just the industry's best quad core solutions, but we believe that for certain workloads, um, having higher frequency dual core within the same power envelope is actually a better solution, and so we will leverage uh, these uh, product benefits so for, to do that. For those workloads that can efficiently take advantage of all four cores, they're always going to benefit by having a slight reduction in frequency, but four cores, rather than just two cores running at a slightly higher frequency. But what we find is for many workloads, they, we certainly saw a, a tremendously a quick adoption going from single core to dual core. We think it'll actually be a bit slower going from dual core to quad core because there are certain workloads that they get from one to two very easily, but going from two to four it runs a bit is a, is going to be a, a bit of a a challenge in terms of all the software implications of that. Right. So there'll be certain workloads that are inherently. Uh, threaded to two cores, but not as much so to four, and those would be the ones that would be great candidates for a dual core solution. Now, if you look at the server space, though, what you can say is for the majority of the workloads, they're going to benefit from that quad core solution. So we expect, just like we saw on dual core, in the aggregate, a very quick transition from dual core to quad core. Suffice it to say, though, it's 2007, we're still selling a lot of single core products, right? So, you, you know, again, it's not one of those things where everybody goes to 100%. All the things that Barcelona represents, that 65 nanometer technology, all of those microarchitectural improvements, the direct connect architecture in the context of a quad core, right, that can really feed a direct connect architecture where memory attaches directly to that processor, can really feed all four of those cores. We see Barcelona is just going to really reopen that gap against our competitor and establish us as a clear winner. One of the questions I get is, well, why do you think they're not going to be able to respond to Barcelona just like they did, say, RevF? Mm -hmm. And I think the answer is, is pretty straightforward. If you look at Barcelona and compared to the competition, there are a couple of fundamental statements you just haven't heard them make. One is they haven't really given any short or medium term timelines for when they're going to address the problem of their front side bus architecture. It's, and, and more and more of the industry experts are coming online saying that's going to be a problem for our competitor that they're not going to be able to really derive the system performance until they address that. And they've made no official statements about doing that anytime soon. Secondly, the uh, Barcelona, unlike the, some of these prior generations, represents all these new microarchitectural enhancements and you haven't heard our, com our competitors say anything about when they make the transition to monolithic quad core that they're going to be incorporating significant microarchitectural changes. So I think that when you look at all that Barcelona represents, the microarchitecture, the monolithic quad core, direct connect architecture, 65 nanometer technology, it's really a compelling story that distances us from the competition to where their next step isn't going to be sufficient to catch up. Gervais Restaurant, authentic French cuisine in Silicon Valley.